Hello and welcome to The Daily's Double Shot. I'm Kylie Walchuk. And I'm Gideon Amari. On today's episode, Brianna Lai reports on the UW Bunny Run, which swept through campus last week. Then, Kimberly Spaulding visits the Ave to cover last weekend's street fair. Kylie and Chris Freeve report on the latest rec installment. Arnold Chan reports on the Undocumented at UW conference. Chris Freeve profiles the UW MacGuffin contest. Tarek Walmsley searches for the best Euro on the Ave. And Lauren Lemieux profiles UW golfers at Zadina Parks. All coming up on The Daily's Double Shot. First up, Brianna Lai takes a look at a bunch of students running around in their underwear. We're here at the Axe Undie Run where students are stripping down to donate their clothes to local charities. What you do is you take your clothing and you donate it and then you're left to run in your underwear in a path. And it's, it's just a great thing because everyone is hyped up about it and you get lots of people that come out. And also Axe is sponsoring it this year. Axe decided this spring to have a nationwide competition among 10 schools and we got picked. And the purpose of it is students come and donate the clothes off their backs and we take it to local charities um, tonight, so that's what we're going to do. Um, Axe is also committed to donating $5,000 to Solid Ground, which is an organization over in Wallingford. Could you guys tell me a little bit about what brought you out to the Axe Run? Well, we just heard about this run and we thought it was a good opportunity to uh, get out on the streets and run around in underwear. We hardly ever get to do that. It was fun to do an undie run and then I saw it was for a good cause, so why not? It's our senior year, we wanted to go all out, literally all out, so... <laughs> We're excited and we're ready to do this. Yeah, I'm going to lead the pack with this, make sure everyone knows we're coming. Come in hot because we're going to be flying. I actually just saw a sign advertising it and then I was walking back from class and I saw all these people standing out here and it looked like fun. So I thought I'd come by and check it out. Um, I did the Undy Run yeah. last year and it was ridiculously fun. I didn't really know what it was, but um, like the library is the best part. Like the library! The did you donate? Um, I, I donated a t-shirt and a pair of athletic shorts. A pair of jeans, a t-shirt? Yeah. I just got my first item and it is a puffy vest with fur. Notice you've got some husky underwear on, that's pretty cool. I'm supporting the cause as much as I can. You know, if I, if I was allowed to take these off, I probably would. Uh, I support the community a lot. Go Huskies! Go, Go Huskies! Woo! We're ready for this! Woo! Woo! I'm Sunday Run! <laughs> The annual street fair was held on the Ave last weekend. Here's Kim Spaulding with the story. We're here at the annual University Street Fair, where the entire Ave is shut down for the whole weekend for all sorts of food and fun. You guys want to tell me what your favorite part about the street fair is? Um, just like trying out all these different like styles of music. It's really cool to see all the local artists and everything kind of come out and put all their pieces of art out here and, I don't know, enjoy Seattle. I enjoyed seeing Scarf Man. He looked like he was having fun. Yeah. It's called Lamp Working. It's been around for quite a while. Cool. So now, have you made all these faces here in your in your booth? My wife and I, yeah. My wife, and she does all the painting. This is our fourth year coming to um, the street fair, but yeah, we in the summertime we do um, arts and craft shows and fairs. And it's a Brazilian booth. It's very nice. We have a Brazilian restaurant in the West District. We there for 10 years, and then the first time we we tried this fair. Have you seen anything just like really crazy weird here at Street Fair today? Uh, yeah, I saw four guys leaning on each other's knees, and then a guy started juggling knives on top of them. That was pretty interesting. I haven't seen that before. Crazy. Um, when it comes to the Av, no, nothing compared to like the Av normally. So it's all about the same. I mean, you see people running around naked. It happens every day. Now, can you tell me what you guys are out here doing? We're going to try and flash mob. Yeah, we're going to start our own flash mob right here, 2010. We're going to do it. <laughs> Have you
have you had fun here today? Yes. Have you seen anything really cool? Yes. Um, the inflatable um, slide. Have you been having fun at the tree fair? Have you seen anything really cool here? Yes, I have. I've seen a lot of weird people. They dress weird and they act weird, so. <laughs> you guys seen anything out here just like totally crazy, like you never would have seen anywhere else? Probably that unicorn, save the unicorn. So what are you out here doing today? Okay, this is performance art and this is an imaginary video game, okay? And it's part street theater, it's a part social sarcasm. I'm trying to define that definition. That's what is a machine, what's a human being, and I'm plant plus I'm making fun of everybody. Go, 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 go. Okay, oh, oh. Ding 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 ding. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up Look out for the whirlpool, look out for the whirlpool, ding ding Yeah. I'm making balloon hats for people and balloon hearts and balloon dogs and balloon cats and stuff like that. Well, I'm. I'll tell you, if you want to make balloons, you have to practice for 703 days. Here you go, news lady. Oh. <laughs> so that concludes a little sample of the University Street Fair. This is Kimberly Spaulding reporting for the Daily's Double Shot. Next up, let's hear what you have to say about the latest installment in the Shrek series. Welcome to Cinema Chat. I'm Kylie Walchuk. And I'm Chris Shreve. And this week we're reviewing Shrek Forever After in 3D. Shrek Forever After begins with Shrek and Fiona and their life in the swamp. They've got their whole lives down to a routine. They're really happy, but Shrek's kind of bored. And so he decides to make a deal with this Rumpelstiltskin character, which gives Shrek the opportunity to go back to his ogre roots and be the mean, fearsome monster he was in the first installment of the movie. There's some fine print in the contract, however, and Shrek has to find Fiona and get things back to the way they were. I thought it was a fun movie. Uh... It brought me back to the feeling I got with the first two movies. They were a little more uh, more fun for the audience of all ages. The third one, I thought they kind of dropped the ball, but I think this movie really brought it back to the Shrek that we all know and love. I totally agree with you there. Um, I think that this movie really did go back to the first um, two movies. There was more humor that was you know, for a general audience. The adults were laughing and the kids were laughing. I like the way that even though none of the characters had any familiarity in the new the new world, mm -hmm. uh, they all they still were able to get all of the original characters in there and give them sort of their own new personality that just played off of the original personalities. One of my favorite parts was uh, Puss in Boots. Definitely. Putting on the weight and <laughs> he couldn't even run around. It was pretty funny. Mm -hmm. Shrek and Donkey aren't friends anymore. Donkey doesn't recognize him and thinks he's a scary ogre. They have to build that friendship again like in the first film, but it's reversed because now Shrek is trying to get Donkey to be friends. I think the movie did a good job of bringing in fairy tales that maybe haven't been in the past movies. The Rumpelstiltskin was a very menacing little guy. And then they also had the Pied Piper, which oh, was Pied just Piper. fun. Uh, didn't have any lines, but he always played his music to get his point across. And all the music actually in the movie I thought was uh, was pretty good. There was a lot of singing going on in this movie, and I, I, I like that about it too. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It, they did a good job keeping the energy up. Like the first two films, this is a good film for the whole family. Adults and kids will like it, and if you didn't like the third one, don't be put off and not go see Shrek 4 because you think it's gonna be, you know, this lame, <laughs> lame, boring movie, but um, it's, I think it was funny and I think it was, it brought us back to the first two movies. I agree, it was high energy, it was not too long, so you were able to sit down, stay focused the whole movie. Um, all the characters, again, really added to the story and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it and I think that you will too. So it looks like we're both in agreement, Shrek Forever After is a good, fun movie for the whole family. So go see it. Thanks for watching Cinema Chat. I'm Kylie Walchuk. And I'm Chris Shreve. See you later, Huskies. So, was it really worth seeing? I think so. Okay. Here's Arnold Chan's report on the Undocumented at UW conference. What challenges do undocumented students face at this and other institutions of higher education? 
What efforts do institutions like this undertake in trying to meet the needs of this group of students? What, if anything, can or should be done in the legal arena to make their lives easier? Is the DREAM Act a good idea? I guess one of the one main reasons that I wanted to organize this was because I've heard, I work at the Student Legal Services Office on campus, and I had had students come in to the office with questions, undocumented students with questions about their legal status. And so, and I hadn't, before a couple years ago, it was an issue that I hadn't even heard about. So I wanted a way to kind of spread awareness about this on campus and help the this movement get get going as it is right and now. And I remember I decided to do the sales program, which finishes with an internship, which I couldn't take because I didn't have a social security, even though I did all the classes. Uh, the most important thing right now they can do is first to inform themselves about what's happening with immigration right now and what and take a stand. Because what we need is right now people coming out and saying I support or I don't support but not taking a stand is the worst thing that you can do. If I could tell students one thing that they should do, it should be to educate themselves and become more active about the issue because it affects um, themselves, their friends, and the country's future. So, and also just to realize the power that you, each person, each, especially a young person, has to affect this debate. I want them to certainly keep their hopes and dreams alive, and that begins with uh, initiating a conversation about the University of Washington as an example, but higher education in general, is to seek those folks that support you. Because there's gonna be a lot of naysayers within your high school and elsewhere. So uh, realize that uh, you can achieve your dream, but it's gonna take hard work and communications with supporters. We teach them if they dream boldly enough, if they work hard enough, that they can um, they can't achieve something in this country. Next up, UW students made short films using the MacGuffin plot device. Here's Chris Shreve with the story. Today we're headed over to the Mooncat Theater to check out the MacGuffin Film Contest being put on by the University of Washington Film Club. I'm Tommy Yako. Uh, I'm the director of the film club. I also um, directed uh, the movie Bringing Sam Home, which will be playing tonight. The MacGuffin Film Contest is a uh, an idea that the film club came up with a couple months ago. We were trying to figure out what our contest would be for this quarter, and we actually, um, I saw there was an Alfred Hitchcock script writing contest that I was thinking about entering, and one of the things they talked about was the um, the prevalence of MacGuffins in, in Hitchcock films. And so I, uh, I just threw out the idea of doing a MacGuffin contest, and uh, we went with it. A MacGuffin <laughs> in film history is a plot device in a story that everyone is uh, basically, um, all the action is geared towards getting that thing. So. We screened Pulp Fiction a couple weeks ago, and um, the MacGuffin in that would be the briefcase that has something shiny coming out of it, if anyone has seen that. It, and you never find out what's inside the briefcase, but it drives the story along. My name is Rachel Watson, and my film title is Blue. I was actually watching the film 2046 by Wong Kar Wai. That was a lot of, it influenced, well, it inspired my film a lot. And then also, I was actually reading a book, uh, an art book, and the title, that's how I got the name of my film. I'm Jonathan Tyrone, and the title of my film is Paper or Plastic. The movie is about an ongoing war between tinfoil and saran wrap. I came up with the idea of my movie. Uh, it was for a class, and I was supposed to use two different things that were told in critique that I was supposed to improve on. One of the one was that I fall in love with my footage too much and I'm supposed to make my films a lot shorter. The second one is make myself really uncomfortable and I really don't like stop motion and I don't like abstract work, which this work is both of. I just joined the film club recently, so uh, I thought this would be a good way to sort of get my name out there and you know, start showing my films out in public because that's not something I've done recently. Our club in operates entirely off of our Facebook group, which I know is a bit, it's a bit impersonal and it can be scary at first if you, you know, to, to go out to an event where you don't really know anyone besides some name from the other end of the internet somewhere. But uh, that, that, that's basically how we're operating at this point. We have screenings all the time. We do try and do a contest every quarter. Um, and we uh, do other, we have, you know, announcements for other events like opportunities to go um, crew on shoots and stuff like that. Be sure to check out the UW Film Club's Facebook page where you can find out information on the club as well as upcoming events. Reporting for the Daily's Double Shot, I'm Chris Shreve. Thanks Chris. Up next, Tarek Walmsley searches for the best Euro on the Ave. 
Hi, my name is Tarek Wamsley, and today we're in search of the best Euro on the Ave. My first stop was Samir's, just off the Ave in 43rd Street, where I ordered a lamb and beef Euro to go. Next, I crossed the street to Cedar's Mediterranean Grill. And finally, I dropped by Aladdin's on the Ave in 41st before heading back to the Daily Newsroom to get the three giants ready to eat. I invited two of my most trustworthy food critics to assist me in the endeavor. So now that we've um, gone to the Ave and collected all of our Euros, um, I'm joined here in the Daily Newsroom by Chris Shreve and Andrew Midtrack. We have our three Euros. The first is from Samir's, the second from Cedar's, and the third from Aladdin's. So I guess let's dig into our first. I'm excited. Let's right. start. Are you guys noticing anything right off the bat? Or I'll let my mouth be the judge. All right. <laughs> this one, fair enough. It's drippy. The Pita is a little a little hard on this. It might be might be because uh, I got one of the ends, but it's a little a little harder than I prefer with my euros. I like this one. It's been a while since I've had a euro, so I'll reserve my judgments until I taste the others. And this next euro is from Cedars, just across the street from Samir's. This one's very saucy. Yeah. Uh, stark contrast to the other. I like the sauce a lot, especially with the pita on this one. It's it's a lot. Well, it's toasted or taste toasted first of all, but it's also softer. I feel like it's got more flavor than the first pita. Mm, I think the sauce is really refreshing and also a little bit spicy, which just adds, mm -hmm. a, adds another element. To be honest, really I'm, like. not, I'm not tasting the meat as much though. This isn't as flavorful as the other meat. Right. So, now that we've devoured our second gyro, which is from Cedars? From Cedars. Let's move on to our third, which is from Aladdin's. Mm. There's a lot of seasoning on this one. It's not as overpowering as the first one, and it goes really well with the meat. A lot of flavor on this, juicy. It is more flavorful, more seasoning on it. I think they should uh, check their vegetables more though, because I get a green tomato. It's not a good sign when you have to take a part off of your. <laughs> so now that we've um, tasted all three of our euros, um, it's time for the judgment phase. You want to start? Uh, I was personally a fan of the one from Aladdin's Best. I thought the seasoning and the meat were both really good. Uh, the pita also had a good texture, which is what I wasn't a big fan of on the first one. Aladdin's gets my vote. I'm gonna have to agree with uh, Chris on this one. Aladdin's has a lot of flavor. It's got um, a lot of ingredients. You can just tell her I got a lot of tomato in mine, a lot of lettuce. Um, like you said, whatever that seasoning is, it's good stuff. Um, and the meat, also flavorful. They're just uh, the best combination of the three. I liked a lot of this a lot, but I think my favorite was the one from Cedars. Um, I think what really tipped that one over was the sauce. I really liked that mm -hmm. sauce. I thought it was the only one that had a little bit of spice, and I, I don't like a ton of spice in my food, mm -hmm. but I definitely like a little bit. I think it just enhances all the flavors. It definitely had a more subtle flavor right. than uh, mm -hmm. Aladdin's. I'm surprised you say that's your favorite, because actually my second choice would be this really? one. All of the Euros were really good, and actually they were all in about the same price range. Um, the one from Samir's was $4.35 after tax. Um, the one from Cedars was $4.50 after tax, and the one from Alliance was $5. So within what, 65 cents of each other, I would say that that would yeah. be a deciding factor for any of them. They're all pretty affordable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're all pretty good. So Chris and Andrew both preferred the Euro from Aladdin's and I preferred the one from Cedars. Um, thanks for watching, best Euro on the app. Those look pretty tasty. Yeah, not so much. Alrighty then. <laughs> Here's Lauren Lemieux's profile on UW golfer, Sedina Parks. Hey there, dog fans. Today, we'll check out the new state-of-the-art Husky Golf Center and talk with sophomore golfer, Sedina Parks, about playing for the University of Washington. What was your favorite moment from the 2010 season? My favorite moment from the season was at regionals this year, uh, one of our seniors, Molly Aronson, she, it was her last tournament that she's ever gonna play in for UW and coming in the last hole was very emotional for her and it, um, she made the last putt for birdie and it was just, um, the whole team just came in and supported her and gave her congratulations for finishing off the year with a bang, so. If you could play one sport other than golf, what would it be? Um, if I played another sport, it would definitely be basketball. Um, basketball, I've played basketball ever since I was probably six, when I was really, really young, and up to my sophomore year in high school. So it would definitely be basketball. What's your favorite course to play on? 
Well, the trip when we went to New Zealand was great. We played so many courses. We played Cape Kidnappers, Kinlock, which was my favorite. Sedina led her team in scoring this year in the Pac-10 Conference and is eager to conquer even greater feats next season. So now we're just going to enter the Husky Golf Center right here and show you around a little bit. I got it. We're in. We're in. Oh, here's our big W that we got going on down here and the men's Pac-10 Championship model. They won. They're very, very good. And we hope to get there sometime soon. So here's our big golf facility with the putting area, the chipping area. Um, here's our hitting, where we hit balls and work on our, our swing a little bit. Here's the video camera that we have to uh, look at our swing and track man to, visit, to look at how far the ball goes and how much spin we're getting on it. And here's how we control it right here on the computer. Um, over here we have a little putting device, a camera, so here's a little dot that we put our ball down that views from the front and the back angle of our putting stroke. Over here we have 2005 Golden Tee, a little video game that I like to whoop everybody's butt in because I'm so good, so I'm really, really good. This is the work area where we do a lot of our work with our clubs and gadgets and stuff like that. This is pretty much my favorite spot because you can sit here and watch TV, lounge, have the other girl and guys golfers in here chill, relax, get to know each other a little bit better. Golf books, ton of golf books. You don't see me here very often, but <laughs> good stuff, good information when it comes to the game. Here's our refrigerator. Got a lot of stuff in here. Stuff in here that I've seen in here for probably about a month now. It's okay. It's probably old. We used to have a lot of snacks in here, but season's over now, so I think we kind of cleaned everything out. Here's the locker room. Not very, not very big, but we don't need anything too big. So we share a locker room with the guys, definitely. And here are the sophomores. We have the short, short lockers. And um, here's my locker. I just got some new clubs, really excited about it. So hoping to play with those pretty soon and work out the grooves. This is the equipment room. Co coaches lock those up because we tend to, you know, take balls and gloves and stuff we're not supposed to take. All right, guys. Well, thank you for coming in. Um, hope you had a great time. About to hit a few balls, so you guys got to get out of here now. See you guys later. Thank you for watching this week's episode of The Daily's Double Shot. We'll see you next week, same time, same place.